I'm Austin LaFar. Thanks for watching Truck Tech. And when it comes to trucks, we got you covered. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Today on Truck Tech, Project Dragon Alley finally meets up to its namesake, the drag strip. Tested and tuned on the dyno. Now, what's our ET? Who knows? Today is a pretty big day for Project Dragon Alley, our 2011 GMC Denali HD. Now, if you remember, we just got done doing a complete rebuild of basically the whole drivetrain, most importantly, the engine. It got a new stronger crankshaft, different connecting rods, different pistons, cylinder heads, camshaft, larger turbocharger, and an all new fuel system, plus a built transmission. And today's the day we're gonna fire it up. Now, you will notice that it's missing a pretty big chunk up here, the cooling system. And that's simply out of convenience because, say, if something goes wrong or there's a small leak, it's a lot easier to access all the stuff on top and on front of the engine with the cooling system out of the way. Now, I did have to take a few extra steps. I made a loop of hose, basically, between where the transmission cooler used to be and the same thing where the power steering cooler is, just so it doesn't shoot fluid kind of all over the place and make a mess. Because the cooling system is out, I can't run it for that long, but I can start it up and let it run for maybe 20 to 30 seconds just to do a basic function test and ensure that I can move on. Now, a few steps I already took care of. I primed the oiling system just by cranking the engine over to make sure I have oil pressure. And the same thing with the lift pump. I ran it for a little while and cracked the lines right at the inlet of the CP3 just to make sure I have fuel up to the injection pump. But there's no fuel beyond that, so I do expect it's going to crank over just a couple of times before it actually fires off. But this is the moment we've been waiting for, so wish me luck. Oh, well, here goes nothing. There's lift pump. Come on, you can do it. It's a little bit nervous. Don't be shy. Come on. Must have done something wrong. Well, the one thing you can tell about a diesel is if it doesn't fire up, it's pretty much one thing, fuel. So. Either there's a whole bunch of fuel, or rather air, that's trapped in the high pressure lines, which is kind of what I'm thinking, or hoping rather, or it's something catastrophically wrong. Come on. There it is. Oh, smooth as silk, too. All right, we'll do a leak check. That did take quite a while to bleed all the fuel out, but this thing sounds super smooth. I don't see any leaks. Nothing's falling off, so I'm gonna kill it so it doesn't get too warm, and then we can put it back together. That's pretty awesome right there. I was, I'll admit, I was a little bit nervous because it did crank over actually a lot more than I expected it would, but a huge sense of relief right now because I know I don't have to take anything back apart. I know we're in business. Our LML Duramax comes with a pretty sizable cooling system, but even so, we're going to upgrade things a step further. Now, when it comes to building lots of horsepower in an emissions equipped diesel, or really any engine for that matter, cooler air temperature is kind of the name of the game. And ours starts right here with this Mishimoto drop in intercooler. This has a 101% increase in core volume over the stock intercooler, and it's 73% thicker. And this is going to pull a tremendous amount of heat away from the compressed air that comes off of the turbocharger. It's going to flow through these three inch AFE aluminum intercooler tubes, which are much larger than stock. And all the air is going to start with our Banks Ram Air cold air intake, which also flows 35% more air than stock. So altogether, we've got less restriction, more volume, greater flow, cooler temperatures and more horsepower, plus reduced exhaust gas temperatures and even better fuel mileage. Kind of like the best of everything. But before I get to the fun parts, I'm going to put that fan back on the engine. 
The Duramax uses a massive mechanical cooling fan. And to properly secure it to the front of the engine, I'm using a special tool which engages with the pulley on the fan mount. Our old radiator simply bolts onto the new intercooler. How much does this thing weigh? Uh, probably 100, 150 pounds. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. And with some extra muscle, it reunites with the truck. Okay. Get behind the AC line there. Perfect. If you're building a high powered diesel truck, you need to check out Summit Racing. Since they supplied all of the airflow parts we're installing today, like these intercooler tubes, but also most of the parts on our entire engine build, including the fuel system, rotating assembly, and even the cylinder heads. Next, a shakedown run to test for leaks. For your intake system to feed cold air into the turbocharger, you can't just have a filter mounted on the end of a tube exposed to engine bay heat. It has to be isolated in a box, much like the factory did, and that's what you get with the Banks Ram Air Intake System. And this is the last piece to our install, and then we can probably get this thing outside and put some test miles on it. Our Denali has been sitting inside the shop for about six months since we tore it apart. So needless to say, it's a pretty big milestone to get this thing moving under its own power once again. It might seem a little bit goofy driving this truck around with no grill, no headlights, no hood, just with everything exposed, but it's a step that I always like to take because it saves or has the potential to save a whole lot of time. I mean, let's say you had a leaky lower radiator hose, the transmission cooler line wasn't seated all the way in and you had to fix it. Well, I would much rather know now that everything works and doesn't leak and does what it should before I put all that stuff back on, because if you have to take it all back apart, that's just another hour or two of labor that you're gonna have to put in just to put it back together once you have finally fixed everything. So it's well worth the investment. The Allison 1000 is a smart or learning style automatic transmission, and the TCM learns or basically adapts the fluid volumes of each of the individual clutch packs inside the transmission. Now, when you get a brand new trans, you don't really want to just go out and hammer on it right out the gate. You want to let it go through its learning cycle. So once you clear those adaptives with a scan tool, just do a couple of easy acceleration runs, let the transmission shift through all of its gears, let the converter lock up, you know, double check your fluid level when you're all done, and then just take it easy for the first 50 or 100 miles and just kind of let everything figure itself out. Now, so far, everything seems to be doing great. The truck is actually still on the stock tune. It hasn't even been adjusted for all the parts that we've installed yet, but I'm gonna put some miles on this thing just to make sure everything works great, get the motor broken in, you know, do a first fluid change on the engine and the transmission. Then we're gonna put this thing on the dyno and get a good hot tune up on it, see how much power it's gonna put down. On a brand new build like this, you definitely wanna pay extra attention on the first couple of miles. You know, look and listen. Listen for any weird sounds, anything that's out of place, you know, grinding or, you know, excessive whistling, like maybe a boost leak, stuff like that. And just keep your eyes out for maybe extra signs of smoke. Something might be dripping or leaking. Um, but, you know, I figure once I get five, 10 miles on this thing and I'm comfortable with it, I think everything will be good to go. We'll head back to the shop. Then I can put the front end back together and make this actually look like a truck again. If you're gonna be doing any sort of racing with a diesel pickup truck, more than likely you're gonna be spending some time at the drag strip since these things are so heavy they really can't corner out on a road course. Now, that being said, there are a few changes that we've made to the chassis and suspension to help us put this torque down to the ground without spinning. Now, it all started some time ago when we rebuilt the rear suspension, lowered it three inches with a drop shackle, and then we removed the overload leaf spring, which lowered it one additional inch, but then that introduced a little bit of axle hop into the situation. To combat that, we installed a set of Caltrax traction bars. Now, this is a pretty unique design, which eliminates that axle wrap and the wheel hop, and it also improves traction by forcing the spring, the axle, and the tire down into the pavement. 
Now, even with all that, we're still going to have traction problems in a boosted launch situation. But to remedy that, all we got to do is reach down and switch it into four wheel drive. Now that'll eliminate the traction problems, but there is one extremely weak link in the front suspension and steering that we need to address first. Because of the geometry that's built into the front suspension, the front wheels have a natural tendency to want to tow in whenever you apply power to them. And that effect is increased as you add more power and also if you have a deeper dish wheel, both of which we have. Now there's got to be a weak link somewhere and the first thing to give on a Duramax is definitely the tie rods. This thin spot right here measures in at just over 5 eighths of an inch at its thinnest spot. And the first time you go to launch this thing with any amount of power, the wheels are going to want to tow in and they are because that tie rod is going to turn into a pretzel. To prevent that from happening, we're going all out with some PPE stage 3 tie rods. Now, it doesn't take a microscope to see how much larger and stronger these are going to be. So we'll get these bad boys thrown in and then we can go to the strip. I normally don't have to reach for any sort of a plumbing tool, but the only thing I was able to find in the entire building that would work on the inner tie rod nuts is a pipe wrench. Those suckers are about two inches. Nice and snug. Well, this wraps up what is probably my favorite build that we've done in a very long time. And that's because you can do anything you want in this truck, whether it's driving every day, hauling the trailer, or just destroying the rear tires in an awesome burnout. Now, next time you guys see this thing, we're gonna strap it on the rollers next door and see how much horsepower we're putting down at the rear wheels. And after that, we're going drag race. Smoky, I like it. All right, well, nothing fell off. It's spooling up like it should. Dino's recording RPM, so we're about ready to make a run. Yeah, one of the challenges we will have, though, is that we are 100% emissions intact, so how much power can we actually make? Well, that's a question that Nick from DuramaxTuner.com is gonna answer. We really wanna keep this thing clean. We wanna keep this truck running at an air fuel ratio at a lambda controlled limit. We want a lot of air through the motor, so we keep it cool, we keep it happy, and we keep long-term durability up there. So air fuel ratio is a term that a lot of people have heard of and you know in a gasoline engine when you're cruising down the road you're probably somewhere between 14.7 to 1 you know at cruise and then maybe 12 and a half 11 to 1 under wide open throttle. Nick a diesel engine is way different from that what kind of air fuel ratios are we going to be expecting to run in this LML? That's a good question. The, on, the L, on the LML, we really want to keep the thing lean. So there's no lean limit. We can run it 20 to 1, 30 to 1, 41. It's not going to hurt anything. Our limit needs to be on the richness. And as we bring that richness below 1.2, 1.15 lambda, or somewhere around 17 and a half to 1, that's when we're going to see our soot start to accumulate. That's when we're going to see regen frequency come up. And that's when we're going to start to see long-term durability issues. So we want to be really particular about that. Now, you know, a DPF is a technology that's not necessarily brand new, but not a lot of people necessarily know what it is. Um, more or less, it's a filter that goes in your exhaust and it traps soot. And, you know, kind of explain, Nick, real quick, what happens when you increase power on a diesel? What's one of the byproducts of that? One of the theories on increasing power in a diesel is running a richer air fuel ratio. If you do that, you have the potential to increase the opacity or the particulate matter that comes out of the exhaust. Now, normally that exhaust would go out the atmosphere, but like you said, with the DPF, it gets caught. If you get too carried away with that, if you go too rich, you have the potential to plug the face of the DPF. And if you do that, the pressure in the DPF goes up and you don't want pressure in your exhaust system. Diesel and gas guys alike don't like that. So we want to, we want to limit that pressure in the exhaust system and make sure the DPF is able to do its job efficiently. All right, well, you got us a tune sent over. I've got it loaded up in the truck, so let's do a first hit and see where we're at. Let's do it. Sound like a plan. All 
All right, well, did we get a number? All right, 516 on the horsepower and 905 at torque. That's actually quite wow. a bit better than I thought. That's more than I thought, too. Well, what do you say, Nick? We built this motor probably to handle, you know, a thousand plus horsepower. Obviously, our plans did change midway through the build and we're not going to be utilizing, Definitely. you know, most of that capacity, but uh, it'll certainly handle a little more. So what do you think for an emissions intact truck? Like, you know, how far do you think we could comfortably push this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, usually 600 horsepower is kind of the durable, reliable limit on a turbocharger like this. We're going to be at the limit of the injector. You know, if we want to do competition use, we want to hot rod it a little bit. Certainly we can run it a little richer at the track and get a little more out of it. But 600 is a good durable limit for the combination of parts you got. And I guess, what does it kind of come down to the DPF? Like just more fuel than that, you just kind of won't. It, it'll, maybe it'll regen too frequently or? Yeah, yeah. It depends on air quality really. So how, how much air we can get through that motor. You know, if we can keep this opacity down, if we can keep this thing running lean, then we're going to get more power out of it. You know, we're going to have long-term durability out of the DPF. Everything's going to be happier. But if we start chasing power by running it rich. Right. You're defeating the purpose of that point. All right. Well, we got uh, one more hot setting to go. So let's see what it'll lay down. Yep. All right. That sounded a little better, I guess. Uh, how'd we do? Pretty substantial increase. 587 on the horsepower at the tire, and the torque is right at 1,027. Pretty good. That's not a bad number. That's not a bad number. You know, I like that close to 600 number. Uh, the, the torque, I feel like we probably could have got up around 12, 1,300 foot pounds if we could have loaded it a little harder against the brake, but hey, you know, 600 horse is 600 horse. Now, that's just two of the positions, Nick. Um, and when you guys tune to Duramax like this, you have five different options, you know, the driver has to choose from. Uh, walk us through real quick what those are. Yeah, so typically when we do five position switch, it's for the different uses on the truck. You know, a lot of guys tow with these trucks. So if you're running heavy, we got to tune, tune for if you're over 8,000 pounds, call that the heavy tow. If you're running under 8,000 pounds, light tow. Daily driving, sport economy, looking for good mileage and pep, the sport tune. And then for what you guys are about to do on the eighth mile, we got the race tune. Now, you, even though you are called Duramax Tuner, you guys tune everything, right? Yeah, all the late model common rail trucks, man. I love the new Fords and new Rams. We can do basically the same mods we did on this Duramax and get similar power, if not more, out of some of those platforms. But the Duramax is your favorite, though. Uh, let's just, I love the Duramax, I love the Ford, I love the Dodge. <laughs> they all run good. All right, well, thanks again, Nick. We appreciate it. Um, we do have an appointment at the track, so we got to get this thing unstrapped and hit the road. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure, guys. Good luck. All right, thank you. Time to have some fun, huh? Get in the front. And that's where we're headed next. Well, buddy, we made it. We got the truck fully assembled. We made a few runs on the dyno, so we know what power it has and we know it's going to do it reliably. The only thing, we just don't know how fast it goes yet. Well, that's why we're here today at our second home, the Eighth Mile Drag Strip. Now, I'm really not expecting to set the world on fire with a sub 600 horse heavy duty diesel truck, but it's all about having fun, even though we did pick probably the second hottest day of the year to do it. There's no doubt about that one. I'm not even sure what ETs we're gonna run, how fast or quick we're gonna be, but I know we have a lot of torque and that will help us out on the takeoff, so. I guess let's see what'll happen. It gets down and boogies pretty good for two and three. Not bad. It looks like about 75 mile an hour. Well, I know we can do a little better, but that was fun. All right, all right. How did it feel? I mean, not amazing, but... Yeah, two and three. You ran a 992 at 73. Okay, that's not bad. No. Well, that's, a, that's what I expected. All right, two number four. Here we go. Two number five. One at a time, man. Why, why is this One at a time. Run. Didn't actually feel much quicker, I'll be honest. Not amazing. Slightly slower that time. We did have some tire slippage at the takeoff, but that's all right. There's room for improvement. Well, I'll be honest, that didn't really feel a whole lot quicker. 
Slower. Slower, yeah. 10-3 at 71. Hmm. But you did spend some tires taking off and, you know, and you didn't go to the max tune, like I said. So what do you expect? <laughs> All right, well, just for the heck of it, Biggest tune, four wheel drive. I was going to ask about Let it all drive. hang out. There we go. That was a quick run. I like that. See, Max Tune for running 9 2. I mean, I don't know why he wants to see these slow numbers. Max it out. It's not my Ford, man. It's different. Austin's 985 at 74 miles an hour wouldn't be his best. He had a much better launch on pass number two. It felt good. Well, that was, I think, the magic combination. 891, about 75 miles an hour. Dude, broke in the eights. Broke into the eights. Happy with that. Tune five, that's about as hard as we can launch it on the boost because we, we broke traction. It'll just start to kind of push through the brakes. It'll spin a tiny bit, but for a street truck, less than 600 horsepower, I'm happy. Dude, win. Don't forget PowerNationTV.com for more information on any of our truck builds.